Arturia looked at Subaru with a serious face, but Subaru just looked down for a whole minute before he looked up to face her and said. I, I can't do anything. Subaru tightened his fists as he looked at Arturia with a rather broken expression. His eyes were narrowed, his lip was bitten, and his face was pale. It was the face of someone who had experienced despair. Arturia's expression turned soft as she looked at Subaru. His expression reminded her of someone, a broken one that always strives to be a hero. This young man in front of her had failed, that was why he seeks for help, unlike the hero that she knew. The hero that she knew would do anything by himself, he wouldn't ask for help. As such, Artura could sympathize with Subaru's state even though she never experienced it herself. She looked at Subaru and with a soft voice, she asked him. What happened? I can't save her, I wanted to save her, but I can't. Subaru said as he slammed his right fist on the table. Ram and Felt were only looking at Arturia and Subaru from the bar, they didn't know what happened but they chose to stay silent and gave Arturia and Subaru the space. Arturia just looked at Subaru with a small smile on her face and waited for Subaru to continue himself. I, I was powerless. I've tried so many times, but I failed. What should I do? Arturia was confused by what Subaru had said. He tried so many times, but he failed. It was just a day after the royal selection, how could he try many times? And, what was the danger that Subaru talked about? There was a lot of contradiction in his story, and Arturia don't know what to make it. Subaru could be lying to get Arturia away from the capital too if she went to help Amelia with her not confirmed problem. But her feeling told her otherwise. She felt that Subaru told her the truth, that was why she urged Subaru to continue his explanation. I am alone is not enough. Please, after a little bit of time, I recognize your name. Pendragon, England, Britannia, and Caliban. You, you're Arthur Pendragon little sister right? Arturia just smiled at him without saying anything. But, inside her mind, she had guessed something. This Subaru certainly came from Earth. After getting used to this world for more than a week, she noticed that no one wore a jumpsuit like what Subaru had. Not only that, Arthur Pendragon. She introduced herself as Arturia Pendragon, a name that was associated with Fate Game. It was either Subaru only knew about the legend of Arthur Pendragon and didn't play Fate series, or he was from a different Earth from her. But, Arturia didn't like the fact that she was mistaken as a little sister of Arthur Pendragon. She herself was the only one. That was why she corrected Subaru. There is no one called Arthur Pendragon. If there is one, that person would be me. The only rightful heir of my country is me, and me alone. Subaru's eyes shined with hope. He smiled at Arturia and then he shouted. Then. Can you help me? I. I can't give anything right now, but I promise that I will give you something equal with your help. Arturia was about to answer Subaru, but Ram suddenly chimed in and interrupted them. Hear this boy. I've been listening for a while and had no intention to interrupt you. But, I knew that young miss was about to agree to your request, that was why I interrupted you. Ram approached their table and stood beside them. Arturia just gave Ram a wry smile, but she was thankful for Ram's interruption. As Ram said, she was about to give her agreement to help Subaru, but when she thought about it twice, she was too hasty. She didn't even tell Reinhard, her knight, about this matter. What do you mean, old Ram? If she agreed to my request, then I would really be thankful for it. Why did you stop her? Asked Subaru. Although I only knew young miss for a week, I knew more about her than you. She was naive, she will help everyone in need without even asking. But, right now she is one of the candidates for the royal selection. Her knight would surely help her to learn and eventually her naivety would be gone. Explained Ram to Subaru. Then. Subaru shouted at Ram, but he was stopped with Ram's hand that was extended toward him. That was why. I interrupted this time. I owe young lady Amelia too for healing me, but young miss had helped me more than you thought. I know young miss is strong, but explain to her who your enemy is and make an agreement with a contract to bind the two of you. That way, young miss would not help you with only her kindness. Said Ram as he pulled his hand away from Subaru. That's why I said that I will give her a reward after she helped me. Subaru shouted in a desperate tone. Arturia now understood. The boy had a good brain in his head, but he was too hasty to make a rational choice. Subaru, calm down. Said Arturia shortly. What? 
muttered Subaru as he looked at Arturia. As Ram said earlier, I was about to agree to your request because I thought helping the other is necessary and important. But, after considering my position and Reinhardt's position, I can't move without knowing the real problem behind your suffering. Tell me about it, who is, no, who are your enemies? Arturia looked at Subaru with a serious face with her left hand rested on her sword's handle. Subaru gulped his saliva because of nervousness, and he finally opened his mouth. Which cult? They are in Mather's domain right now and was about to attack Amelia. They will attack them in two days, not only that. There was one more obstacle. I. I found out about a beast location, and that beast was blocking the way to the Mather's domain. Arturia's eyes widened when Subaru told her about all of it. Although she can't tell a lie like Crush Karsten or Reinhard, she had her instinct. And, her instinct told her that Subaru was not lying. She didn't know how, but Subaru managed to gain important information in just one day. Young miss, they are a dangerous bunch. I suggested that you refuse his request. Ram said in a concerned tone as he looked at Arturia. Subaru looked down when he heard that, but his hope was ignited in a way that he never expected. No, this is a good opportunity. What was the beast that you found? Hakugiai, Usagi, or Kurahibi? Asked Arturia. Subaru with new hope in his eyes looked at Arturia and said. It was a big whale. I know the location where the beast would spawn too. Arturia smiled as she heard that and stood up from her chair. He looked at Subaru and said, follow me, I will help you. We will talk about the reward later. After she said that to Subaru, Arturia looked at Rom. Thank you for lending this place, Rom. I will pay you in a later day. Rom just smiled at her, but he can't hide his concern, just try to come back safely. Arturia nodded her head and walked out of the house, followed by Subaru. The place that Arturia took Subaru was the night Barak. The reason why she went here was to find Reinhard and tell him about what Subaru had said. Arturia knew that Reinhard was able to find out a lie. That was why she took Subaru to look for Reinhard. She trusted her instinct, but it was better to have Reinhard confirm Subaru's word for her. When she arrived at night Barak with Subaru, she was greeted by the guard that was guarding the entrance of the Barak. The guard saluted at Arturia and asked, Arturia-sama. It's an honor to meet you here. May I know why are you visiting the Barak? Arturia nodded her head a little, gesturing the guard to relax, and answered him. I wanted to meet Sir Reinhard, it is an urgent matter. Sir Reinhard was it? If I remember correctly, Sir Reinhard was patrolling with Sir Julius. I think you will be able to meet them if you go to the plaza. Said the guard as he pointed in the direction of the plaza with his right hand. Arturia looked in the direction that the guard pointed at before turning back to the guard. I see, thank you. No, Arturia-sama. It was my job. The guard answered with a smile and bowed his head to Arturia. After getting the rough location of Reinhard, Artura went to the plaza with Subaru. On the way to the plaza, Subaru who walked behind Arturia hastened his pace and walked beside Arturia. Hey, why are we looking for Reinhard? We need to move fast to help Amelia. His tone was that of concern, but Arturia just looked at him with a calm expression and said. No, Hakugiai was one of the three great beasts. If what you told me was the truth, then we will need help from the knights or mercenaries. One strong person can indeed change the battlefield, but we are not omnipotent. I and Reinhard will deal with Hakugiai, you need to ask for help from Julius to help you with which cult. Julius? Why did I need to ask him for help? Asked Subaru with a confused tone. He had influence within Night Sphere, so it will be beneficial for you if you befriend him. But, don't you anger him and shout like what you did at the Royal Selection Conference. If Reinhard didn't stop you, you will just embarrass yourself in front of Amelia and the other people. Subaru bit his lip at the mention of that by Arturia. That was true, he was about to shout and defend Amelia at the conference. But, he did nothing wrong in his opinion. He just wanted to help Amelia from getting bullied by Priscilla. What was wrong with that? Muttered Subaru. Arturia could hear his mutter, and so she looked at Subaru with a serious face. I don't know what you will say yesterday, but I know something was wrong since you shouted. I bet you were thinking something like every candidate had their own knight, why don't I protect Amelia as her knight, or something like that. What's wrong with that? They were selected as a knight because they were born as one right? Even you were like that, aren't you? Arturia stopped on her track after Subaru said that. 
he looked at Subaru as if she was looking at a fool. Subaru also stopped at his track and looked at Arturia. When he looked at Arturia's expression, he knew that he screwed up and began to panic. Calm down Arturia. He was from Earth, he didn't know anything about night. And you were from Earth too, no need to get mad because of his words. Arturia took a deep breath to calm herself and walked towards the plaza again. Subaru followed Arturia instantly while stuttering. You um, that was. Don't worry, I will forget that words just now. I am not so petty to be offended by your words, you don't know about me after all. They continue their walk in silence, which lasted until Arturia found Reinhard and Julius walking side by side while talking about something. Sir Reinhard. Arturia called out to Reinhard and managed to gain his attention. Julius also looked over at Arturia and bowed his head lightly as he put his arm on his chest when he saw Arturia. Arturia approached them and said. Sir Julius, you don't need to bow at me now. I am in a knight uniform like you, so technically I am not acting as royal candidates right now. Julius raised his head and smiled at Arturia, no, Arturia-sama is a royal candidate no matter how you dressed up. Not only that, I respected your strength and your humbleness. If you don't mind, I would like to request a spar in the future. Please ask me anytime, Sir Julius. Unfortunately, right now there was an urgent matter from this young man here. Arturia stepped back and the two knights looked at Subaru who stood behind Arturia. Subaru? Asked Reinhard. Julius looked at Subaru as he narrowed his eyes. Tell them, Subaru. This place was perfect to tell them your story. The noise from the other people would drown out your voice. Subaru nodded his head at Arturia's advice and looked at Reinhard and Julius with a serious face. He bowed his head at them and said. Please, please help me to save Amelia. She is in danger from witch cult's attack. At the mention of witch cult, Reinhard narrowed his eyes. Julius was a bit skeptical about what Subaru said, and he had no reason to help Subaru as Amelia was the rival of his lady. But, there must be a reason why Arturia, the other candidates brought Subaru to him. That was why he asked. Why we must help you? Subaru raised his head and looked at Julius's eyes with a determined look. There is an archbishop amongst the attacker. My goal is to save Amelia, I don't care if you take the glory of taking down the archbishop. That much will help you to gain recognition from the civilians, right? Julius's eyes widened in surprise. He put his hand on his chin and thought carefully. After a while, he looked at Arturia. Are you sure you won't help him, Arturia-sama? If you took down an archbishop of which cult, that achievement would help you ascend to the throne faster. Arturia gave Julius a smile and said. I have another goal. It seems alongside the witch cult, Hakugiai would appear too. Arturia looked at Reinhard with a smile on her face. Reinhard realized her goal because they just talked about it earlier. Julius also understood what she meant by that and looked at Reinhard. After seeing the smile on Reinhard's face, Julius looked back at Subaru. I see, then allow me to help. Which cult had posseed as a danger to all countries in this world? I will ask my lady about this. Subaru had a big smile on his face after he heard Julius's answer. Yo Sha. He shouted as he raised his arms to the sky. But. As Subaru was celebrating his success, Julius cut his off. We will only take care of the witch cult. The rest of saving Amelia-sama is up to you. Subaru looked at Julius, still with a smile on his face. Don't worry about that. I have my own way. Arturia looked at them silently as he walked and stopped beside Reinhard. She looked at Reinhard and whispered. It seems we need to hasten our preparation, Sir Reinhard. Reinhard looked back at Arturia and answered, it seems so. But, I found something after patrolling while asking the market to prepare for our beasts hunting. It seems we are not the only one who targeted Hakugiai this time. So here we are. Arturia and Reinhard stood outside Karsten Mansion in the capital of Lugnica. They were here because Reinhard had found that the Karsten family brought a lot of weapons such as swords and spears from the blacksmiths. With Subaru's information about Hakugiai and which cult, Reinhard instantly knew that Karsten's family was targeting one of the two. But, Reinhard told Arturia that Karsten family would surely target Hakugiai. Arturia didn't know where Reinhard got his confidence, but she trusted him. In front of the entrance gate of Karsten Mansion, a butler with white hair came out from the gate and looked at Reinhard with a frown on his face. 
Arturia glanced at Reinhard and saw he had a difficult expression, but he steeled himself and stood while looking at the butler directly. The butler closed his eyes and said, I saw that you had changed a little bit, but that doesn't mean that I forgave you yet. He then turned to look at Arturia and bowed his head a little, Arturia Pendragon-sama. If I may ask, what's the purpose of your visit here? To be walking to this place, I thought that would be a bit inappropriate for a person such as you. The butler raised his head and put his hands behind his back. Arturia was impressed by his professional attitude. Even when he was clearly hostile towards Reinhard, for the reason that Arturia didn't know, but he was able to be polite towards Arturia. Arturia looked up at the butler's face and said, I am sorry about my sudden visit. But, I wanted to meet with Crush Sama if she's free right now. I had something, a proposal more specifically about hunting some beasts. The butler narrowed his eyes and asked Arturia, beasts, right? He glanced at Reinhard for a second before he looked back at Arturia. I believe my lady will be happy to see you. Please come inside, Pendragon Sama. The butler stepped to the right and allowed Arturia to enter the gate. Arturia had yet to know the butler's name but from his hostility towards Reinhard and the story that she heard from his knight a few days ago, she could conclude something. That butler was Reinhard's grandfather, Wilhelm van Astria. Arturia and Reinhard were following the butler, Wilhelm as he took them inside the mansion to meet Crush. They were escorted in a room with long table and two chairs on each side of the table. Please take a seat, Pendragon Sama. I will call Crush Sama for a moment. Wilhelm bowed his head towards Arturia and exited the room. Arturia sat on one of the chairs while Reinhard stood behind her. Because Wilhelm had exited the room, Arturia gestured Reinhard to look away for a second and changed into her battle dress. She didn't wear any armor as this occasion was a meeting for a discussion between two candidates, not a fight. After changing into her dress, Arturia looked at Reinhard and asked, Are you okay? Reinhard looked at Arturia with a wry smile and answered her, I'm fine. Please just concentrate on your discussion, milady. Don't mind me. I can't do that. Arturia shook her head, if you, who is my knight as well as my friend is in trouble, it is natural if I am worried about you. Reinhard's eyes widened in surprise when Arturia called him her friend. His wry smile turned into a soft smile and he scratched his cheek. I see. I will tell you later, milady. It seems that Crush Sama has arrived. As soon as Reinhard said that, Arturia looked at the only door in the room. The door was opened shortly after that and Crush alongside her knight Felix Argyle entered the room. But, the one who entered the room was not only the two of them. Surprisingly, Subaru was also present as he followed the two of them from behind. Arturia narrowed her eyes at Subaru. He looked around the room until finally, he realized her gaze and shook his head repeatedly. So he didn't tell them yet. Or he did tell Karsten family but they didn't trust him. Crush looked at Arturia with calculating eyes and a stoic expression. She was confused when she looked at her because from Wilhelm's report, Arturia was wearing Ludmika's knight uniform, but now she was wearing the dress that she used in royal selection. But, as an experienced noble, Crush decided to ignore it. She sat on the chairs across from Arturia and Felix stood behind her. Subaru was confused at first, but he decided to stand near the table between Arturia and Crush. Well then, Arturia Pendragon. How should I call you? You can call me Crush if you wanted to. Please call me Arturia, Crush Sama. I'm sorry for my sudden visit. It is no problem. I heard from my butler that you had something to talk to me about. Regarding beasts hunting. Crush narrowed her eyes at Arturia as she put her elbow on the table and put both of her hands in front of her mouth. While Crush was busy talking with Arturia, her knight was making a tea on the side and the only sound in the room came from crushing a tea leaf for a moment. That's true. We had planned to hunt a beast before the start of the royal selection. Earlier this day, we managed to locate one of the great beast with the help of someone. But, when I asked Reinhard to look at the market, he found out that Karsten family had bought almost the entire stock of the weapon. That was why we are here, to propose cooperation to take down the beast. If I may ask, who was the informant about the location of that beast? Also, which beast was it? Arturia smiled at Crush and said, Unfortunately I had to hide the informant name. But, I will tell you this. Anastasia Sama's knight, Julius had made a move to eradicate the witch cult that was seen around Lugnica. For the beast, it seems the one that currently in Lugnica is Hakugiai. Are you serious? Crush lowered her hands and asked with a surprised tone. 
Her knight that was finished with the tea was also surprised and almost dropped the tray that he held in his hand. Arturia nodded her head at Crush's question to confirm that she was serious, the informant said that he saw a big whale. The only whale that could fly is... Hakugiai. Finished Crush. Are you serious? Asked Crush as she put on a serious face. Her knight, Felix, put two cups of tea in front of Arturia and Crush each. Arturia thanked Felix and he nodded his head to answer Arturia. Arturia looked at Crush with a serious face and said, I am. My knight had confirmed it. She glanced at Reinhard and he bowed his head. That's correct. The informants clearly said that it was a big whale that fly in the sky. He said that he knew the location where the beast would appear too. I believe that he's not lying because he said that there is an archbishop among the witch cult that will appear in the near future. Crush narrowed her eyes and touched her chin with her right hand, if that's the case, then the possibility of Hakugiai will appear in the said location would be high. But, why should I help you? I can find the informant and ask the informant about the location where Hakugiai would appear myself. Subaru's body flinched when he heard that. But, he tried to keep his calm as to not spoil Arturia's plan. He glanced at Arturia and saw her smiling with closed eyes. In that case, I can hunt Hakugiai myself. I am confident to take it down by myself. I am here to propose cooperation because I know that no one would believe me for taking down the Hakugiai by myself even if Reinhard is stating that I defeat the Hakugiai myself. Crush was wavering in her decision as she heard Arturia. She remembered her duel with Julius, one of the strong knights in Lugnica, and she could defeat him easily. Also Reinhard's word in the conference. He was not lying. Crush who had divine protection of wind indication, she could tell when someone was lying. And he, Reinhard didn't tell a single lie in the conference. The strongest person in Lugnica, no, he could be the strongest person in the world had said that he can't beat Arturia, the girl in front of her. As a ruler, Crush was confident with her ability. Arturia also didn't tell any lie when she said that she could take Hakugiai down by herself. So, what she meant in this negotiation was that she wanted Crush to witness her strength. In exchange, the achievement of taking down Hakugiai will be shared for both camps. Crush understood Arturia's plan, she wanted recognition for her strength. Not from her, but from the mercenaries that she hired. After Crush went silent for a while, Arturia extended her right hand towards Crush and asked, How is it? Do you agree to cooperate with me? I just wanted to protect the people from the danger of Hakugiai if you wanted to know my goal. Once again, Crush was surprised. What Arturia said just now was not a lie. Finally, she smiled and took Arturia's hand. I will be counting on you. Arturia smiled back at Crush and said, I am counting on you too. That went better from what we expected. Said Reinhard as he walked behind Arturia. They left Karsten's mansion as soon as the negotiation was concluded. Arturia was the one who wanted to leave because she wanted to look for a mount for herself. She was still wearing her dress because it would be strange if she left the mansion if she suddenly changed into Knight's uniform. Yes, I didn't expect she will accept my offer just like that. But that was good, right Sir Reinhard? She agreed to cooperate with us in taking down the white whale. So, milady. Shall we go to look for your mount? Which one do you prefer? Asked Reinhard. Arturia looked at Reinhard over her shoulder and smiled, I wanted the white one. Reinhard smiled wryly at the act of his lady. She was sometimes acted like an adult, but she was often acted like a child who saw a new toy when they were together. The change of her personality while dealing with important matters really amazed Reinhard. That was why he wanted to work hard for her sake. Let's see Julius then, milady. Although it was just a verbal promise, we had allied ourselves with Anastasia Holson's camp too through Julius. If it's through him, then maybe you could find the mount of your choice. Arturia stopped on her track and turned to look at Reinhard at a high speed with shining eyes. She raised her hand and shouted. What are we waiting for then? Let's go. She pulled Reinhard's hand and walked faster than before. Reinhard just followed her whim with a smile on his face. Something like this is nice for once in a while. Thought Reinhard. Arturia and Reinhard were standing in front of a row of ground dragons. They were waiting for Julius so he could show them the mount that Arturia desired. After waiting for a while, Julius arrived while bringing a white ground dragon that was bigger than the other ground dragons in front of Arturia. I'm sorry that I am a bit late. This ground dragon was a bit fierce, so I need time to bring it here. 
Julius said while pulling over the ground dragon with the rope that was attached to its head. Arturia looked at the ground dragon that was brought by Julius and her eyes shined. It was perfect for Arturia. She approached the ground dragon and extended her hand towards the ground dragon's mouth. Julius was a bit terrified when Arturia suddenly extended her hand towards the ground dragon's mouth. He was a bit afraid that the ground dragon would bite her hand. But, on the contrary of his expectation, the ground dragon lowered its face and nuzzled its head on Arturia's hand. After a while, it approached Arturia and nuzzled its head on Arturia's nape. Ha ha ha, I like this one. Both Reinhard and Julius were surprised by the ground dragon's act. Ground dragon was a proud creature, they never saw a ground dragon act like a pet like this. Arturia stepped back from the ground dragon and put her hands on her waist. She looked up at the ground dragon and nodded her head. I decided. I will take you and give you a name stallion. Arturia looked proud when she said that. Why not? Because stallion was taken from the name of the horse of Arturia Lancer, Dun Stallion. It was natural to name her mount after that horse. Julius released his hand from the rope that he held. The ground dragon, stallion, approached Arturia slowly and bent his head in front of Arturia. Arturia petted his head and said. I will be counting on you in the future, stallion. A day had passed since Arturia got her mount. Right now Arturia was training behind Astria's mansion together with Reinhard. They swung their wooden sword side by side while their real sword was strapped to their waist. Both of them were wearing Lugnica's knight uniform. Arturia tried to get used to the coat and the uniform in case she was attacked by someone while she was wearing the uniform. She could always change into her battle dress though, but she preferred to hide her ability to change into her battle dress in front of strangers of the other candidates. Crush most likely realized Arturia's ability, but Arturia knew that Crush wouldn't believe something that she didn't see herself. Crush would think that Arturia changed her clothes while waiting for her in the room. Getting her ability to change into her battle dress known to the other wouldn't hurt Arturia though, as it was mostly a rather useless ability. Her dress and armor were a different matter, as they were made from Arturia's mana, the dress and armor had better defenses compared to normal full plate armor. Reinhard stopped his swing first and lowered his wooden sword as he looked at Arturia, Milady, we've been swinging for two hours, do you want to take a rest? Arturia stopped her swing and looked at Reinhard with a surprised face, we've been swinging the wooden sword for that long? Yes, Milady. Answered Reinhard as he held the wooden sword in a reverse grip with his left hand and extended his right hand towards Arturia. Arturia lowered her sword and handed them to Reinhard as she wiped the sweat that was built on her forehead with her left sleeves. I didn't realize it. It's like, I really like to swing the sword that time flew faster than the usual. Arturia raised her right hand and looked at it. The skin had turned into a shade of pink because she swung her swords for two hours straight without rest. I was like that too sometimes. But, excessive training didn't do any good to the body. So, please take some rest for today and get ready for our expedition in two days, milady. Two days, huh? It was faster than I thought. Well then, Sir Reinhard. I think I will visit some friends and walk around the city. The truth is I wanted to test my full strength and my affinity for magic, but I was too focused with Hakugia yesterday that I forgot to ask Sir Julius to test my affinity. Reinhard's eyes widened and he bowed his head, my apologies, milady. I had asked Julius yesterday, but I also forgot to ask him again when we met him yesterday. It's my fault. Arturia quickly waved her hands in front of her chest, no, Sir Reinhard, raise your head. We were too focused at Hakugiai, let's leave it at that. We were both at fault, so let's not blame ourselves, okay? Reinhard raised his head and smiled, certainly, milady. Then, I need to leave as I had patrol this afternoon. As usual, I left three gold coins in your room. Please have a good day, milady. Reinhard bowed his head once again before he turned and walked away to the mansion. Arturia looked at his back before she raised her head and looked at the cloud that was swaying away in the sky. Have a good day, huh? Well, I did a good job of not appearing nervous in front of him. An expedition, although I knew that I will be okay, I can't help to be nervous at the thought of it. After all, I'm just an ordinary girl before I turned as Arturia Lily. Arturia walked on the street in the slum. She walked towards Rom's house because she wanted to talk with Felt. The only place she was able to meet Felt, which she considered as a friend already, was Rom's house. The reason why Arturia considered Felt as her friend was simple because Felt was the only girl that she knew outside of the royal candidates. 
Not only that, Arturia felt that Felt was a girl with a lot of potentials. Her speed alone had made her a perfect scout, not to mention her tiny body. Arturia wanted to get Felt to join her side, so she can help Felt and Rom more clearly. Rom also had a look of veteran, which was proved when he stopped Arturia to agree to Subaru's request before she knew the consequences of agreeing to his request without thinking. Both of them would be a great help for Arturia in her campaign. She could offer them a house or a job, with Reinhardt's connection of course. Arrived in front of Rom's house, Arturia knocked on the door three times and shouted, Hello. It's Arturia. The door was opened almost immediately and Felt appeared from beyond the door. Nei Chan. What are you doing here? You just came here yesterday. Asked Felt as she put her hands on her waist. Arturia smiled at Felt and said, Yesterday I forgot to talk about something with you, so I came back here today. You want to talk with me? Let's talk inside Nei Chan. Felt gestured with her thumb as she walked inside the house. Rom was standing behind the bar while wiping a glass. Felt took a seat in front of the bar and swung her legs. Arturia followed her and closed the door behind her. She sat on the chair in front of the bar. When Arturia sat on the chair, Rom asked, What do you want for a drink, young miss? There is a wine and milk, feel free to ask me. Old man Rom. I will have milk. Shouted Felt as she raised her right hand. Felt, you have drunk more than three cups. Said Rom as he pointed his index finger at Felt and leaned his head closer to intimidate her. Felt pouted her cheeks and leaned back against the chair's backrest and said, Stingy old man. Fine. I will give you, half a cup. What about you young miss? Rom pulled his head away from Felt and looked at Arturia. Ah, just water is fine. I just wanted to talk about something with the two of you. Rom nodded his head and picked a wooden cup to prepare the milk for Felt. As he was preparing the drink for the two girls, he asked Arturia. What do you want to talk about, young miss? As you've known, I am one of the royal candidates. Right now my ally is Reinhard, and it was just him all this time. So, do you want to join me, Rom, Felt? It's a selfish request of mine, but I hope, no, please feel free to refuse if you don't want to work under me. Felt was looking at Arturia with her eyes widened in surprise. Rom was done preparing the drink and putting the cups in front of each girl. He looked at Arturia and crossed his arms. Why did you want to invite us? Arturia looked at Rom and smiled, it's my instinct. I had always relied on it since I arrived in this country, and it never disappointed me so far. Rom looked at Arturia and scratched the back of his head with his right hand, I'm sorry young miss, but I can't. I had retired from the battlefield and conflict, so I can't join you. I see, understood. Old man Rom. Felt looked at Rom with hopeful eyes. Rom looked at Felt and let out a sigh, do whatever you wanted, but don't ever regret it. He then looked back at Arturia and said, I can't join you, but if you need some men, just tell me. I had connections. Yeah, Nei Chan. If you need some help, just tell me. Arturia smiled at both of them, thank you, that's enough. Then I won't beat around the bush. Can you contact three men for me, Rom? It's to protect someone. Rom went silent for a while before nodding his head, yeah, leave it to me. It's to protect that brat, right? Yes, I'm counting on you, Rom. Leave it to me, young miss. The day had passed quickly, and it was now the day of departure. Rom had introduced two of his former friend in arms to Arturia on the same day. They were both men in their thirties, but they had experience in protecting someone. One of them had short black hair, and his name was Frederick. While the other had long brown hair, his name was Ryan. They were having a sword on their waist and now they were mounting their ground dragon in front of Karsten's mansion with Arturia and Reinhard. Arturia was riding Stallion while wearing her battle dress with her armor on. She stroked Stallion's neck with a smile on her face. Reinhard also riding his own ground dragon, it was a normal one with brown color. Subaru was nowhere to be seen as he had headed towards Anastasia's army that was led by Julius to take care of the witch cult in Mather's territory. It was the time, milady. Reinhard said from Arturia's side. Arturia raised her head and saw an army of mercenaries that was consisted of human and beast man appear from the distance. A lot of carts that were pulled by ground dragon were approaching the mansion. The carts were filled with weapons and armor for the expedition. It seems so, Sir Reinhard. Somehow, it looked like we are going to war. 
Going to the expedition against Hakugiai is the same as going to war, milady. Such is the terrifying strength of three great beasts. Said Reinhardt as he looked at the group that was approaching the mansion. Arturia nodded her head and turned towards Frederick and Ryan. Both of you can go now. Find Subaru and protect him for me. Leave it to us, young lady. You and Subaru was boss's friend, so you are our friend too. Said Ryan as he put his right hand over his chest. That's right. Added Frederick as he nodded his head. Thank you, I will be counting on both of you. Don't forget to defend yourself too. Oh. Both of them answered at the same time and controlled their ground dragon to turn away. Then we will go, young lady. I hope we can meet again after this. Said Ryan as he raised his right hand and waved it slightly. Arturia raised her right hand and waved back at Ryan, yes, let's meet again. Both Ryan and Frederick's ground dragon ran after that. Arturia turned back to Reinhard and said, all of us are going to go back safely, right Sir Reinhard? Reinhard didn't answer Arturia's question immediately. Instead, he looked at the group that was arrived in front of Karsten Mansion before he turned his focus at Arturia. I don't know. Arturia went silent as Reinhard said that. She looked towards the group and said. Then we just need to make sure that they can go back safely. Yes, that's correct. As they were talking with each other, Crush approached them while riding a ground dragon that had golden armor. She was wearing full plate armor with a red cape donning the armor. Her green hair was tied in a ponytail and there was a sword on her waist. Greetings, Arturia-sama. Crush looked at Arturia and observed her from toes to her head. She narrowed her gaze at Arturia and asked, Are you sure you are going to fight in that dress? I had a spare armor in my mansion if you wanted to use it. Arturia smiled at Crush who appeared to be worried about her safety and shook her head. I am fine with this. These are my battle outfits which I had used many times. I am more comfortable with these outfits and able to move freely. Not only that, I had my armor on top of my dress which protect all my vital organs. Arturia pointed at the armor on her chest and showed her gloves to crush. I won't force you if you said so. But please take care of yourself. Said crush as she smiled at Arturia. Oh right, I was about to tell you about our strategy. Mind to follow me, Arturia-sama. I don't mind, please lead the way, crush-sama. Well then, this way please. Crush turned away and controlled her ground dragon to a makeshift tent that was located a little bit away from the mansion. Arturia followed her with Reinhard. There were a few individuals inside the tent. From Crush's side, there were she herself, Felix, and then Wilhelm. From Arturia's side, there were Arturia herself and Reinhard. Then there was a beast man who had a wolf head and a muscular body. It seems that everyone is here, let's start the strategy meeting by introducing ourselves. As you've known, I am Crush Karsten. The ones behind me are my knight Felix and my butler Wilhelm. Crush introduced herself and her follower then turned to look at Arturia. Arturia understood her gesture and said, My name is Arturia Pendragon, the one behind me is my knight, Reinhard van Astria. Ho, oh, the sword saint himself. It's nice to meet you. Said the wolf-headed mercenary. My name is Ricardo Welkin, the head of a mercenary group called Fong of Iron. Crush nodded herself and said, then let's begin the meeting of our expedition against Hakugiai. I had some ideas in my mind, but they need cooperation from the mercenary group. I am confident to take the Hakugiai to the ground. Arturia listened to Crush's idea. Even when it was Arturia who proposed the cooperation, Crush was the one who hired the mercenaries and the supply. So, Arturia just listened to her idea for now before inputting her idea later. Let's hear it. Said Ricardo. Arturia nodded her head slightly, please tell us about your idea. I have some in my mind too, but it was too risky. Crush nodded her head and tell Arturia and Ricardo her plan. She planned to bring the Hakugiai to the ground after attacking it from a distance away using magic. Wilhelm will have a rather risky task as he was going to go on top of the Hakugiai and deal damage directly on its body. Arturia frowned when she heard Crush's idea. If the creature was walking on the ground, that idea would be good. But, the creature that they targeted this time was flying in the sky. That's too risky. I can't agree with your idea. Said Arturia as she looked at Crush. Then, let's hear your idea, Arturia-sama. Crush looked at Arturia and glanced at Reinhard for a second. Crush had guessed Arturia's plan. 
She thought that Arturia wanted to ask Reinhardt to take the beast himself, and she was confident that Reinhardt was Arturia's plan all this time. But, how wrong she was. Arturia put her left hand on top of the handle of Caliban and smiled. I can bring the Hakugiai to the ground. I will do it by myself, at that time please attack the beast at the same time while maintaining our distance. I don't know how tough the skin or bones of Hakugiai are, but at least we need to take its vision. Whoa, you serious? Asked Ricardo. Arturia nodded her head, if what Sir Reinhard told me about Hakugiai was true, then I can at least make Hakugiai unable to fly. At that time, we can attack him without fearing its most fearsome ability, and that is his ability to fly. The tent went silent for a while, until Crush nodded her head, we will be counting on you, Arturia-sama. After the meeting, Crush gathered all mercenaries and members of the expedition in one place and gave a speech. Arturia mounted her ground dragon beside Crush and both of them were facing around 300 people who joined this expedition. Felix mounted his ground dragon on Crush's right while Reinhard mounted his on Arturia's left. Crush controlled her ground dragon and took a step forwards. She hardened her expression and shouted. All right, people. This day had come. Today, we will take down the beast that had existed since 400 years ago. Today will be the day that will be remembered. It was time for us to make history. This story will be passed to the future, there are two choices. Crush paused a little. The crowd in front of them had various expressions. Excitement, bravery, some of them were looking forward to being passed down in history. But, one expression had spread more than those, it was fear. Fear towards the beast. It was Crush and Arturia's job to wash those fears off everyone's face. It was a hard job, but Arturia was confident that she could do it. It looked like some of you didn't believe that we could take the Hakugiai today. Said Crush as she looked around the crowd. The crowd went silent, that time, Arturia stepped forward with her ground dragon and shouted. Don't worry. You are the chosen one, we will gain the victory. Believe in me, and believe in my knight. All of you just need to follow us from behind, watch us. I don't say that you will be useless, no. You will be the most important of us, as you will be the one who will dealt the killing blow towards Hakugiai, one of the three great beasts. The crowd began shouting loudly alongside Arturia. Woof. Let's go. We will kill that whale. Arturia nodded her head a little and unsheathed her caliban. Crush also unsheathed the sword on her waist. Both of them raised their sword and Arturia shouted. Raise your weapon. Let's shout it, shout your bravery. More importantly, let's shout for our victory. The mercenaries in the crowd raised all kinds of weapons. Sword, spear, hammer, there was even someone who raised staff amongst the crowd. As if they understood something, all of them shouted at the same time. Ugh. Crush turned her ground dragon and then swung her sword, let's go. It's time to hunt a whale. Crush began to march forward with her ground dragon. Arturia followed her and marched forward, walking beside Crush. The mercenaries followed them from behind while shouting, and that went on for a few minutes. The expedition members advanced through forests and plains until they finally arrived at the place that was informed by Subaru. So that is Flujo's tree. Arturia asked Reinhard beside her as she looked at the big tree that was higher than the cloud in the distance. The tree was the biggest one that she saw. It was massive, but her gaze was taken away from something else. From the top of the tree, a mist began to form and a shadow appeared. Arturia looked up and saw a white whale flying in the sky. A second later, a screeching sound came from above. A woo. A lot of mercenaries covered their ears with their hands, but some of them were trembling while looking at the whale in the sky. So that's a cookie eye. Said Crush. Arturia looked at Crush and saw her having a smile on her face while looking up at the Hakugiai. Wilhelm who stood beside Crush had locked his sight to Hakugiai. His face was calm, but he hid a fiery flame behind it. The flames of hatred. Arturia looked at the Hakugiai that began to approach them from the sky and jumped off her ground dragon. She unsheathed her sword, and without saying anything, the people around her gave her the space. Crush and the other retreated back. Reinhard pulled the rein of stallion and brought it away. Standing in front of the crowd, Arturia walked silently while holding her sword with both of her hands. The sword was glimmering, seemingly reflecting the sunlight even though there was no sun. She held it while pointing the tip on the ground before she stopped moving. Slowly, she closed her eyes and took a deep breath. 
she pulled her right leg back and raised her sword, making it parallel with her shoulder. The tip of the sword was pointed at Hakugi eye in the sky, a second later Arturia opened her eyes. Mana began to gather around her and her sword. The wind blew in her direction. The mercenaries and crush who hadn't yet to see Arturia utilizing Mana were amazed. Wilhelm also took his gaze off the Hakugi eye and looked at Arturia. He glanced at Reinhard and saw him focusing his gaze on Arturia while smiling. The Hakugi eye was on its halfway to the expedition squad. Arturia looked at the Hakugi eye and thought. Half of my strength, that will be enough. The mana that gathered around Arturia had intensified, creating a small tornado around her. Her dress and hair danced around because of the wind until it finally settled. Please watch me. I will bring you victory. Arturia said in a low volume, but all people in the expedition squad heard her. The mana around Arturia concentrated on her sword, and then she shouted. Sword of Selection, grant me power. Cleave the wicked, Caliban. She thrust her sword towards the Hakugiai. A golden beam followed her thrust and it flew towards Hakugiai at a fast speed. It hit Hakugiai in less than a second, but nothing happened. The mercenaries and Crush looked at the attack that did nothing to Hakugiai and turned confused. Nothing happened? Muttered Felix. A second later, Arturia lowered her stance, and then Hakugiai exploded. Jeef Thayai. Hakugiai let out a loud cry as his stomach exploded. The explosion happened several times and created a cloud of smoke. No way. Said Crush in disbelief. What power? Exclaimed Wilhelm. Everyone was shocked by the destruction, they just looked at the Hakugiai who was crying in pain with an amazed look on their face. The Hakugiai began to fall to the ground. It was injured greatly and the right side of its stomach was gone because of Arturia's attack. Arturia raised her sword and shouted, let's kill it. The mercenaries who were surprised were brought back by Arturia's shout and began to march towards Hakugiai while shouting. Let's go. Arturia-sama had opened the path. Follow me. Wilhelm ran towards the Hakugiai at a fast speed, faster than the ground dragon. Reinhard approached Arturia and said, it began. I hope nothing unusual happened. That was amazing, milady. Arturia lowered her sword and answered, indeed. I hope nothing happened. She looked back at the road that they took to come here and frowned, I hope this is just my feeling. Wilhelm had reached the Hakugiai first and he jumped on top of its body. The mercenaries also reached the Hakugiai and began to launch their attack. The whale was struggling and trying to fly again, but Wilhelm stabbed his sword on its back and he began to run while his sword was buried on Hakugiai's body. The sword created a wound to Hakugiai as Wilhelm dragged it in his run. The Hakugiai was crying in pain until finally Wilhelm arrived at Hakugiai's eyes and stabbed it with his sword. The eye was gouged and Wilhelm stood on top of Hakugiai's head while raising his sword in victory. The mercenaries shouted in delight as they raised their weapons. At that time, Arturia had a bad feeling. She looked at Hakugiai and she jumped to Stallion before shouting. Run! Move away from that beast! Reinhard and the other were surprised by Arturia's shout. Especially Crush. However, Wilhelm had a lot of experience when dealing with monsters and people. He trust Arturia's word and then jumped down the Hagukiai before running away. The other mercenaries followed Wilhelm's lead and run away from the beast. After they gained a distance from Hakugiai, the beast had started to release a mist around its body. Because the sun had set, the mist was not too visible from where Arturia was. She looked at Crush and saw her having a terrified expression on her face. With no other choice, Arturia jumped down from Stallion once again and ran towards the Hakugiai. Milady. Reinhard was shouting from behind and he jumped off his ground dragon too. He followed Arturia from behind and managed to catch her up in no time. Milady, the mist is dangerous. Please fall back. Reinhard said to Arturia as they ran towards Hakugiai. Arturia looked at Reinhard and gave him a reassuring smile. The mercenaries passed them and looked at them with disbelief. Finally, Wilhelm had passed her too. When they passed each other, Arturia said. Leave it to me. Wilhelm stopped on his track and his gaze followed Arturia and Reinhard. That small girl who was even smaller than his wife was saying to leave the Hakugiai to her. Wilhelm can't leave it alone. He turned and ran towards the Hakugiai, following Arturia and Reinhard. From behind, a sound of something fired to the sky was sounded. 
The sky was exploded and the miniature sun appeared in the sky. Arturia looked at it and was surprised. The dark sky had become bright, and she could see Hakugiai past the mist. Arturia smiled and let mana flow inside her body. Her unbelievable speed had become faster, and she ran inside the mist towards the Hakugiai. Reinhard was surprised and he increased his speed too. Unfortunately, Wilhelm was not able to follow the speed of those two. So he stopped on his track and watched them with a pained expression. Don't die, please. He muttered as he stood in the middle of the plane before he turned away once again to get his ground dragon. Arturia can't see anything further than 10 meters inside the mist. That's why she raised her sword. The sword began to let out a golden glow, and she shouted. For those who are brave enough, follow me. Let us slay this monster. The whale seemed to be attracted by Arturia's shout, it began to fly again after recovering its lost body part with an unknown method and dived towards Arturia. Milady. Reinhard shouted and looked up to the sky. Arturia instantly knew what was coming. She jumped at the same time as Reinhard and the Hakugiai crashed their previous location a second ago. The body of Hakugiai was riddled with wounds. Its remaining eye had become red. More importantly, some parts of his skin were opened and it was the one who created the mist. Sir Reinhard. Are you able to draw your sword? Arturia shouted at Reinhard while they were landing on top of Hakugiai. No, but I got this sword from the ground. Reinhard answered Arturia as he showed Arturia a steel sword that he held in his left hand. That's enough. Let's stop the mist. After she said that, Arturia stabbed Caliban on Hakugiai's body and used mana burst to travel faster. She arrived at the tail of Hakugiai in less than a second, creating a wound because of her sword. Blood sprouted up from Hakugiai's body, dirtying Arturia's dress and face. But she didn't mind it. She quickly turned around and dragged her sword that was stabbed into Hakugiai's body, attacking the part of Hakugiai that released the mist. Awo. Oh, Hakugiai began to gain more elevation and he twisted his body around to make Arturia and Reinhard fall. Reinhard was also doing the same thing as Arturia. He ran around on top of Hakugiai's body and slashed the part of its body that was releasing the mist. A few seconds after they did that, a person jumped on top of Hakugiai's body and began to drag his sword to slash the Hakugiai. Sorry for the delay, let me kill this monster. Wilhelm appeared from the mist on top of Hakugiai's body and began to run again. Every part of Hakugiai that released the mist was injured in no time and Hakugiai released a cry again. Reinhard looked at Wilhelm with a smile before he jumped down the Hakugiai, milady. Let's attack from the ground. Arturia nodded her head and jumped down the Hakugiai too, Wilhelm. Let's go down. Wilhelm looked at Arturia for a second before he shook his head. I will do it here. He then began slashing around and jumped on the head of Hakugiai after he said that. Arturia and Reinhard landed safely and she looked up at the Hakugiai. She saw Wilhelm take a stance and then slashed the horn of Hakugiai, cutting it off cleanly. He jumped down after that and landed beside Arturia. The horn that was cut began to fall to the ground and made a tremor. Oh, oh. The Hakugiai began to open its mouth and created the mist again, surrounding the body with it. The next thing that they know, countless screams began to sound on the battlefield behind them. Arturia's feeling had become restless, and she put mana on her sword and slashed it upward. The slash generated a wind that parted the mist, making the sky clear once again. Another slash was sent from the back, clearing the battlefield from the mist. The one who sent that flying slash was Crush, and she approached Arturia. This is bad, we had lost more than we thought from the mist. Crush said to Arturia with a worried tone. But, Arturia didn't even gaze at Crush. She looked up at the sky and said, you're right. This is bad. Arturia had a strained smile on her face. Reinhard caught on and he looked up at the sky. His eyes were widened in surprise. There are three whales. Said Reinhard. Crush and Wilhelm were surprised and then they looked up at the sky. This is not possible. Exclaimed Crush. Arturia strained her eyes and then managed to see it clearly, Crush Sama. Can you give me a time? I need more time than earlier, at least I need 30 seconds. Crush paused for a while before nodding her head and saying, leave it to me. I will take the right one inch. Wilhelm also nodded his head, I will take care left one. He then looked at Reinhard with a serious face and said. You will protect young lady here. Protect her. 
he made sure to say it twice to Reinhard. Reinhard hardened his face and answered, I will. Crush went back to the frightened mercenaries and armies that were afraid when they saw three Hakugiai in the sky and shouted. Are you going to stand here powerlessly? Look at that girl. The girl who stood in front of all of us. She is not afraid even when the Hakugiai had split itself into three. Look at that girl who held her sword with a steel gaze. Are you not embarrassed? You are men, mercenaries, a knight. The army began to look at Arturia and saw her standing under three Hakugiai with Reinhard. She was not wearing full plate armor like them, she was wearing a dress. Even so, she was not afraid and looked at the Hakugiai with a steel gaze. The mercenaries began to clutch the weapons in their hands. The knights that joined the expedition gritted their teeth in frustration. The girl that called herself a knight was not afraid when she faced the Hakugiai. The girl that looked in her early teen had stood bravely on the battlefield, without a sign of fear on her face. Even when the strongest being in Lugnica was beside her, that didn't matter. They were afraid, they were afraid of Hakugiai even when they stood a little distance away from the Hakugiai even when they knew that Reinhard could protect them. Oh, oh, oh. One of the mercenaries shouted a war cry, and Crush smiled. Now, our duty is simple. That girl needed time, we need to give her what she needs. 30 seconds, that much is fine. Let's keep the other two whales busy for 30 seconds. How can we just sit here in despairs when that girl stood over there with her sword still in her hands? Once again, are you not embarrassed? Crush raised her famed sword, Lion Rampant. What are your answer? Once again, Crush asked the mercenaries and the knights. All of them raised their sword and the magicians raised their hands and shouted. Let's bring them down. Let's go. I will shoot them from here. Crush smiled and then she looked at Hakugiai. All troops. Fire. The magicians began their work and fired the magic cannon at the two Hakugiai, trying to bring them down. Because the Hakugiai was injured greatly, they were able to bring one down almost immediately. Wilhelm who stood right under the Hakugiai saw this chance and jumped on top of the Hakugiai. The troops also began to run towards the Hakugiai while some of them brought ropes to tie the Hakugiai down the earth. The magicians on the troops began to refill the magic cannon. While they were at it, some of the magicians extended their hands and shouted. Al Goa. From each magician's hand, flames were fired and hit the second whale's stomach. Arturia saw this as a chance. She held her sword parallel with her neck and pointed its tip towards the whale that flew the highest in the sky. Sir Reinhard, I am counting on you to protect me. Reinhard put his right hand on his chest and bowed at Arturia, of course, milady. I will protect you no matter what. Arturia nodded her head and began to gather the mana in the environment around her sword. This time she put more mana compared to last time, enough to make the sword glow brighter than the sun and illuminated the area around Arturia like headlights. Not only that, the atmosphere around Arturia was distorted to the point the troops could only see a blur around Arturia's sword. Please, don't break, Caliban thought Arturia. Now she was using all the mana that could be put into Caliban without breaking it. It was tough, but Arturia managed to hold the mana still and didn't break Caliban. She knew that Caliban can't handle all of her strength, more so in this world without Gaia and Aleia who interfere with the supernatural. Arturia's strength was enhanced, and it was stronger than Arturia that she knew from fate. No, with magicians roaming around the world and the witch that could destroy the world existed, getting enhanced was an understatement. My heart was beating loudly and faster as I pour the mana into Caliban. I wanted to awaken the dragon heart inside me, but now is not the time. The unawakened dragon heart began beating loudly, and Arturia could feel it more clearly compared to her first attempt to feel it. In her hands, Caliban started trembling, the sign that it couldn't take any more mana. But she needed to convert that mana into an attack, and she need time to do that. The second whale that was struck by the magician's attack howled loudly and it affected the troops. Crush sent a flying slash toward the second whale and it hit its stomach, bringing it down to the earth. Disperse. Some of you take the second whale and hold it to the ground. The troops began to separate. Some of the mercenaries who were led by Ricardo moved towards the second whale riding a mount that looked like a big wolf. They shouted a war cry and began their attack towards the second whale. The third whale that stayed in the sky began to cry. The cry caused the soldiers that were part of the troops to hold their ears. Some of them were not affected, but some of them were affected badly until they lost their consciousness. 
Crush was also affected and she was down on her knees, but her knight worked fast. As a famed healer in Lugnica, Felix immediately healed Crush and asked her. Are you okay Nyan, Crush-sama? Why yeah, how about the others? Asked Crush as she looked around the situation. The first whale was fine because it seems that Wilhelm was not affected by the cry and kept attacking the first whale. But, the second whale was freed from the attack and began to fly to Arturia. That's bad. Sir Reinhard. Crush shouted at Reinhard in the distance, but he had moved before he heard the shout. Standing in front of Arturia, for the first time in the battle, Reinhard unsheathed his sword. He could feel that Arturia had done with gathering mana, and she just need to unleash it. He made eye contact with Arturia and she nodded her head. Reinhard smiled and raised his sword. Facing the Hakugiai in front of him, his blade let out a bright blue glow that rivaled the golden glow of Arturia's sword. In a second, he brought down his sword and the battlefield went silent for a while as a bright slash launched towards the Hakugiai. It went through Hakugiai's body with no problem and slashed it into two. However, the Hakugiai in front of him was a fake, and so its body disappeared into a thin air without spilling blood. Reinhardt's slash was a different story, it didn't stop on its track and hit the flugel tree, leaving a deep mark on it. I leave the rest to you, milady. Said Reinhardt as he stepped away from Arturia. Arturia had enough time, and now her attack was ready. Once again, please grant me your power. Sword of Selection, Cleave the Wicked. Caliban. With a shout, Arturia thrust her sword towards Hakugiai in the sky. The beam was fired at Hakugiai and hit right below Hakugiai's head. In less than a second, explosions occurred on the spot where the beam hit and it blew Hakugiai's head without leaving anything. Only Hakugiai's body was left, and it was slowly fell to the ground. The troops began to run to avoid Hakugiai's body. The sky was illuminated with the explosion, and the mist was dispersed with the dead of Hakugiai. Arturia herself had a rough breath and was about to fall, but Reinhard caught her in time and put her hands over his shoulder. She was fine, but she was firing a huge amount of mana in less than a second. It drained her, and she need a few seconds to recover. Good work, milady. With a smile on his face, Reinhard began to walk away with Arturia. Naturally, if I can't do this much I won't be fit to be called a king. Arturia had recovered her stamina with the help of Caliban, but she decided to keep her hand around Reinhardt to hide her trump card from Crush and the other. With a crash of Hakugiai's body, the fight had ended and the troops were shouting in victory. Well, if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.